<laughs> okay, I'm doing this video with Sterling, so I think most people Ster already know you. We got together for these last two weeks. We know each other already. We've been working together, but over these last two weeks, we've been building astrocytes, and then also there's a new medication that we brought on a little while ago. The goal is to increase your own mobilization of the stem cells that you're making uh, and also exosomes to, to put those on board. So we've done a handful of things during this visit. The reason for today's video is just to kind of get your take. Again, you're kind of a body science expert these mm -hmm. days. Uh, so to get your take because the last time you came, you yeah. saw a number of folks that were getting improvements. This time, same, but also you had some pretty remarkable changes as well. We've been working with ALS at Body Science since 2019. That's when we had our first reversal. We've had three more since. Over the past four years, we've been developing and refining our strategy and our therapy targets. During 2021 and 2022, we focused largely on pathogen control, including Lyme disease, herpes viruses, and other infections. In 2023, we combined that pathogen kill strategy with a regenerative focus. It was aimed at repairing the damaged neurons rather than just simply eradicating the infections. By mid-2023, I developed three glial cell-focused approaches to support motor neurons. The astrocyte protocol is one of them. I developed several new stem cell technologies over that same time period, again focused on repairing post-infection damage rather than just pathogen eradication. The astrocyte protocol was launched in November 2023 and has shown remarkable lasting benefits. This is not an FDA-approved therapy for ALS, and we acknowledge that results vary. The video is for educational purposes only. This is not intended to make any claims or to provide medical advice. It would be our hope that therapies for ALS become more widely available. If you are an academic center interested in working together to make this and other treatments accessible and affordable, please contact us, www.bodyscience.life. All right, I'm going to hand it over and tell us uh, what's been going on. Yeah, so, well, my whole time here, I've, you know, I've had slight improvements here and there, you know, but I've, we've actually witnessed these people like that didn't have a voice at all. All of a sudden they can talk and they can swallow and, and it, and it's lasted, you know, and I, I have other friends that couldn't move their hands for a year and now they can fully move their hands and it's lasted and it's going great. And people that have completely got rid of drop foot and and now have facial expressions. I mean, we've just seen tons of things, almost like miraculous type stuff. And and I myself never really been able to experience that until this week. It was kind of crazy. About four hours later that night, we're back at the hotel, and out of nowhere, I just had an urge that I wanted to get out of my chair by myself. And you got to understand these last two weeks, I've been pretty weak, kind of sick feeling. I haven't been able to get out of my chair without help at all. And I didn't just get out. I practically jumped out of my chair and I had this urge. I, I just wanted to go for a walk, but my wife talked me out of it and, <laughs> and I decided it probably wasn't worth the risk, but we were getting kind of hot. So we went back up to the hotel and I jumped out of my chair again, and before I knew it, I was walking and, and high-stepping with my knees, you know, up past my chest and stuff, and and I was standing unassisted, and, and, and I was doing balancing drills while I'm standing, you know, and doing things that I haven't been able to do in I don't know how long, and then I was able to reach, so, you know, the first thing I did is reached out and grabbed my wife and gave her a hug. I haven't been able to do that in I don't know how long. <laughs> Um, I was able to sit down without using my hands and not flopping and uh, just tons of different things like that. And it was so good. It was in the evening and I, we didn't want to go to bed. I'm like, I don't want this to end. You know, we want to stay up, but we had to get up early in the next morning. So we went to bed and even in bed, you know, I'm able to turn over by myself and move my legs and just all these amazing things. And unfortunately it didn't last, but, uh, some things are still improved from that time, like being able to move my legs in bed with full covers on and different things like that, and um, neck fatigue and a few other things. And so, you know, it's just a testament. You got to trust the process and keep going. But 
I'm, I'm glad I got this glimpse into the future of what it's going to look like because it was amazing. And it was, I never expected a switch to flip on and, and everything happen. Uh, you know, I've had little improvements, like I've had some muscle development recently. It's been real exciting, and, but it was slow and what I call slight. Um, but this was like somebody just flipped a switch and all of a sudden I had everything. You know, I had no fatigue, no brain fog, no dizziness, complete core strength, complete everything. I couldn't raise my arms clear above my head, but I could raise them and, and reach out. While I was standing, I was able to drink my big hydro flask by myself. Um, it was just absolutely amazing. So, so what well, we know, I started this... Uh, towards the end of the summer and the beginning of October, November. Uh, and at that point, it's when it became really clear to me that it's not motor neurons that I'm looking for as a target. It's the non-neuronal tissues, the glial cells that become so important. And so I was looking at astrocytes and that's how it became the astrocyte protocol. That's how that, that came about. And so we started back then, I think about Greg, who got his voice and then started walking. Here we are in June. We're, almost, we're end of May. And he has continued with all of those results. Uh, I think about, because you normally talk to Craig, and when he left last time, he'd already regained a lot of function in his hands. To your point about things like drop foot, I mean, I think about Cindy and the changes and yeah, I think also about the number of people now that have improved in their voice and their swallowing. What I know is it takes us an average of two weeks to really build not so much astrocytes, but the mitochondria. And so the question is, what's the difference as far as lasting? We did one week of astrocytes and one week of a stem cell focused uh, mobilization approach. Uh, and so I know already we can get benefit, and that benefit will continue afterwards. We're just talking about Carol. Where Carol called you guys afterwards, she called me. I didn't even recognize her because her voice was so much better. And that was two weeks later. I think about Cindy, drop foot resolved, and it was two weeks later, right? So I think what we're commonly seeing here in the office is that kind of back and forth as neurons look to be, I guess, healing, right? I think Brian said it really well when he described the fact it's like they're under a cage and then improving astrocyte firing, so the ability of the motor neurons to get mitochondria, allows these things to come out from the cage. And then Sterling, uh, when this whole thing happened with you on Wednesday, again, we have enough astrocytes that we can turn on motor neuron function. We need more astrocytes in your case to make it more of a permanent situation. The fact that you had that much change is what Brian and Cindy described, it's kind of crazy to watch, huh? It's crazy to go from a situation of motor neurons locked down to a situation where all of a sudden it's not one thing that improves. It's like everything all together that's improving. Yeah, it's not. So I, like I said, I really expected things to be more slight, you know, like my muscles growing a little bit, you know, things happening slow, which, which is a big part of it too. But to have everything turn on all at once like that was just, was just so thrilling, and it you know it lasted the whole night, and uh, and uh, you know I still have some benefit from it, but it's uh, it's exciting. You were walking with your wider so. steps. You were able to lift your arms up. The fact that you were able to get yourself up from a chair like you were. Oh, and out of a couch, and you know these hotel couches are so low, and I just popped right out, you know and. It was just awesome. I think about the number of people I know now, the number of people, because you are in communication with a lot of the people. Uh, I think about the number of people that we know between us that have gotten better and just have improvement in symptoms. I don't know. If I had to guess it out right now, I'm somewhere between about 25 and 30 people that come to my mind of people that we've watched. I think about Dan earlier this week where his speech is so poor. Yeah, that was so exciting. All of a sudden he can move his tongue and he hasn't been able to move his tongue. I mean, you know, there's just been crazy things and I've watched them right before my eyes and now I, I'm i one that can say I've failed it too, you know, and so it's uh, I'm excited to come back and do it again and work on astrocytes and 
work on that mitochondria. That's what we got to do. Sure. So. Right, so that becomes our big priority. What we need is a couple of weeks of building mitochondria. Uh, and, and so getting astrocytes in order to provide healthy mitochondria to the motor neurons. Our objective now, take the same thing that we saw, which is getting these motor neurons out of the cages that they were in. So the way I think that that really looks is I assume what we're talking about, and I don't know because we don't have a way to measure this, but I think what we're seeing is a reduction in TDP43, that proteinopathy. And the only reason I make that assumption, we're certainly not making new motor neurons in people, right? We're not making new motor neuron connections because those things couldn't happen this quickly. Instead, the only thing I can assume, and I think about that Tel Aviv study from November of 2021, where they were discussing that if you can break down TDP43, the motor neuron goes back to firing as it did before motor neuron disease. And when I think about Wednesday night and what you're describing, it's like that. It's like motor neurons just turning back on again and operating perfectly. It gives me a very different perspective of this disease. We were talking about that before the video. The way I thought this would look, muscles being deconditioned, that person being deconditioned from not moving for so long, even when neurons start to fire, you wouldn't instantly get function. But given the number of radical improvements in these very short windows of time that we have now seen uh, since November, it really reframes this disease and the ability of these neurons to in fact fire. And so going back to kind of Brian's point, they're healthy, they're just stuck in cages. And Sterling, in your case, imagine it wasn't like a leg. It's legs and arms and core. And then the funny thing is brain and focus and concentration. So even the fact that those things are somehow linked, and that's the question. What the heck is going on that brain fog is also associated with whatever is causing all four limb in you know limbs to be involved and core. So it's one switch. I know you'd made that comment, and it really is true. It's like it's one switch and switching it back on seems to turn all the motor neurons back on I can't wait to see next time right because the difference between where we are right now and where we need to be you're right this was the glimpse of your motor neurons and their ability to fire and so for the others the difference was multiple astrocyte weeks of building them and so we get back to that next time for sure all right listen it was great seeing you this time I'll see you again soon. See you soon. See you soon.